high. In the last video, we got the products names and product prices, and we saved them in list. Now we need to create a CSV file with this information. However, there are a couple of things to do before that. If you see, when we print the product names list and also the products prices list, they look okay, but they are not that okay. Remember that we are going to save this information to a CSV file which is comma separated value and if we have commas inside for example inside the product name this can cause some conflict when we upload this information to our data warehouse for example this product name has comma inside so it will have some problems when we upload to our data warehouse and also the same happens with the, the prices if you see here, for example, this 3800 number has a comma. There are some workarounds, however, for this example, we will just delete all the commas in both product names and product prices. So let's start. First, I will comment this because we don't need to print that anymore. We will do what is called list comprehension. So basically, we are going to modify every element of our list and we will create a new list with all the new information. But just to not have many lists, we will modify all the elements of the list and we will save them in the same list. So let's start by the names. Let's call this is going to be the new, the new products names list we want to replace all the commas with nothing we just want to delete it so let's call it n dot replace uh, commas we will replace commas by, by nothing and how do we specify that it has to do with every element of the list we say that it's similar to from what we do here we will replace the comma for nothing and we will do that for every n which is I, I will call it n to every element of the list in the list of product names let's go and delete commas so what happens when I print this new list this new list but has the same name okay let's see okay for example here if you see there are not any more commas inside our products names we will continue doing that with our product prices and we did the same. It's, it's actually the same. Use. We'll just copy this and products prices. I will use P of prices. I'll replace comma and I will print. Here it will be easier to notice the, the change. Okay, let's run the code. And if you remember, this 3800 number has a comma after the tree now it doesn't have uh, this also 1045 also had a comma and it doesn't have anymore so there is one step left if you see these numbers are not properly numbers if you see they are inside quotes for example this 5 is inside quotes this 99 is inside quotes and if they are inside quotes, it means they are strings. So we need to convert all our numbers that are strings to float. So how do we do that? Well, the same. Just the same process, we use the same format. The only thing that changes is the... Um, I will copy this before this. And how do you 
convert a string to float. Well, you just write float and inside the the string. Okay, convert string to float. Let's see what happens. So let's see. Yes, it worked. Now we don't have the quotes and now it's perfect. Now we can save this information to a CSV. To do that, first we need to create a dictionary. It's similar to create an object in JavaScript. Let's create a dictionary. We will create a dictionary called product dictionary equals uh, let's call it name the name key we have uh, the the products names values and the same with price products prices okay it's okay now that we have a dictionary we need to create a data frame from this dictionary for that we are going to use uh, the pandas library and you install that with pip install pandas on your terminal and how do we use this library well create data frame uh, we will just call our data frame products df from data frame and you call this um, pd dot data frame and you pass the dictionary so now we have data frame okay so we still don't have the csv okay this is the final step we create the csv first we will save our file name into a byron just to be more practical when we use this name and let's call it products.csv and let's create the csv and you just do the products df which is the data frame and you use the to csv here you pass the file name that you want to call the csv I just pass the CSV file name variable and it should be done. Uh, I will run the code to see what happens here. Okay, if you see here, it created a product CSV file. Let's just open just to check. Okay, let's open. And yes, it's correct. We have a name price, Father's Day. Okay, it's here is product name, comma price. Products name, comma price. But if you see, we have these zero, one, two, three. These are the indexes. So how do we delete that? Because we, for this example, we don't need that. We just add this parameter to the to csv method so let's close this just to run the code again and okay need run the code okay let's open again and ah, yes now it's fine now we don't have the indexes at the start of every row let's call it row we only have name comma price name comma price so yes we created our csv file and the next step is to upload this uh, csv file to amazon s3 which is going to be our repository just to save all our data okay the next step is to save our csv file to amazon s3 before doing that, we need to create a user that has the policies that give permission to do these operations. So we go to Amazon AIAM, we click here, 
and we go to the left, we go to policies, and we create a policy that has these permissions. Okay, we choose the survey, which is Amazon S3. Uh, here we need only the uh, write option because we only need to write information to Amazon S3. Mm, we have a warning here because in theory you need to be a specific when you create policies because if you don't you your policy has like too much power but for this example we will choose just all resources uh, because yes it, later i will just delete this uh, policy so it will not have problems because it's not a production example so we go to next Next review, uh, we give it name, call it a policy to upload CSV to S3. I think it's kind of long the name, but it's okay. We just review the uh, the the access that our policy will have, and we create the policy. And it's created, and now we create a user and assign this policy to that user. So let's create a user. It's user upload to S3. And the AWS access type, we choose the access key. We attach existing policies. We will attach the policy that we created. It was called upload something uh, if you want to double check you just click on details we just go to review and we check that everything is okay and we create the user okay here you will have a access key ID and also a secret access key you will need this information I will just copy this and I will just paste here just for a moment because I will need this information. This is a secret access key. In theory, you don't have to show this information to anyone, but I will just delete this, this user after the, the, the exam. It's not much problem. And also never leave this kind of information in the in your code okay so now why did I copy this information here well before we need to install the the AWS CLI you go to this URL and you download this uh, CLI to your operative system I downloaded the, the Windows and I have already installed, it's a pretty straightforward installation. Uh, I have already this installed, so I will just skip this installation part. And what do you do after the installation? Well, you go to the terminal and you type AWS configure. Oh, sorry, configure. Configure. And it's asking you for a access key id i will just copy this no. i will just copy and paste okay i will do the same for the secret access key and default region name well i always use the us is the one and I leave everything else in default and yes it looks like it's okay so we didn't have any warnings or errors so it's okay okay now that we have our AWS CLI configured we need to create a bucket on S3 so we create a bucket let's call it something very generic I will tell you later why projects and just scrape uh, okay, 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 everything else on default and it's already created. Okay, we go to projects as grape. Why did I 
name this bucket very generic because I'm going to create folders and subfolders just to give this example a bit more dynamic, you know, uh, lessons because you can upload di directly to one bucket but in real life you will have many folders and subfolders inside a bucket. If the bucket is called Project Scrape, and let's call the folder Python, which is because it's a Python scrape, you can do a scrape with JavaScript also. Uh, let's create the folder, and inside this folder, we will create another folder and called XC Products. Okay, uh, perfect. Okay, so now that we have S3 bucket on the folders let's upload this CSV to the folders we install and import the Boto3 library this Boto3 is the library that allows us to manage all the AWS services so first we will create a, a client we will call this S3 we will use bottle3.client and the service is S3 and now we will upload our file we do this with, with open we pass the file name which is CSV file name if you remember it's here and the the next parameter is the uh, the mode in which you are going to open this file in this case is rb which is read r and b binary uh, we call this nf and we call our client s3 we use the upload file object function and here we need to pass the bucket name and also the file name the bucket name I will type this con this constant here three bucket name is it was a project script project script okay first we pass the all the everything that we wrote here so we are going to open the file and read all the data and now we pass the uh, bucket name and then we are going to pass the file name but how do we pass the file name we don't do this because if you remember our our files are inside folders so if we do this this is going to be saved directly in the bucket so we need to specify which folders we need to we want to save this information so i will just add here a string and we call this a string folder root and I delete this I delete everything until here and I add this to the file name so how do you concatenate in Python you just write this plus the file name I will save this and I will just if you see there is nothing here let's see okay just to see if there are some errors okay it didn't show any errors or warnings so yeah it worked now the product csv file is here the next step is going to be how to transfer this csv from s3 to our data warehouse which is going to be located on amazon Redshift.